Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube Medium, DanielRosal.tech. So for today's video, I want to demonstrate the process of backing up a Linux Ubuntu computer uh, using Cloudberry and creating an offsite backup. Now I've discussed in my previous videos about backups and Ubuntu. Um, the 3 2, 1 rule, which I will uh, not miss this opportunity to talk about. 3 2, 1 rule, of course, being that you have your primary data source, such as this Linux computer. You want to always create two backup copies of that primary data source. Um, the next part of that rule is two. So for the two backup copies, you want to keep them on different storage media. It really means from one another. In other words, that you wouldn't have, uh, let's say, two backups on a, uh, on a single hard drive, because if that hard drive fails, uh, then you would lose both backups. Um, you can also interpret it, and I'm pretty sure that it's open to interpretation just based on the various ways I've seen it described. Uh, you could also interpret that to mean that every single, the primary and the two data backups should all be on different storage media, and that of course would make it a bit more secure. So let's take an instance where you have your Ubuntu uh, or your Windows or your Mac uh, machine on a certain drive. So take the, the best thing you could do would be to have that first backup, your on-site backup, on a different drive so that if the uh, primary drive fails, the backup will not go with it. And of course, your off-site, needless to say, is going to be on a different drive because it's going to be physically in a different location. And that's the final one part of the rule is off-site that uh, you will have one copy, so two different, uh, two backup copies those two backup copies on two different storage media, and finally one of them offsite. So offsite just means somewhere physically located. It can be in the cloud, which is what we're going to be demonstrating here, or it can be you can even take a uh, take a hard drive, shove it into the boot of your car, and drive it to a friend's house. It actually doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's, some people will say it shouldn't be in the same city because if an asteroid hit. But I think if you're dealing with uh, asteroid strikes, then uh, your non-functional computer or your missing backup is not gonna be the your chief your chief problem. Um, but that's what offsite means. So basically for Backblaze, I think it makes sense. I mean, I'm not pushing Backblaze from any commercial affiliation. Um, I just know that a lot of the data storage and backup uh, enthusiast communities in inverted commas uh, really like Backblaze as well, just because com compared to S3, it is actually really, really easy to use. Um, it's really easy to use and it's intended for backup storage. Backup is what they do. So uh, you can actually go, now I searched for Backblaze Linux just to kind of run through again what Backblaze themselves actually recommend Linux users do. So they have this um, FAQ which is actually only written a few months ago. Uh, Linux applications for B2. So the one they push uh, it seems to be Duplicity and if you go into their tutorial for uh, how to configure B2 with Duplicity. So Duplicity is a command line interface and it'll let you create encrypted uh, off-site backup. So you can see basically you install it via a PPA, a third-party PPA. Um, and once you have that installed, you create your bucket up in B2. And then it's just a case of they're showing here how to backup your home directory. So you can see the tilde for home. Uh, duplicity and uh, then this is the syntax you need your key ID enclosed in uh, these square brackets then a semicolon then your application I uh, your application key again enclosed in squared brackets at and then your b2 bucket name so that's fairly straightforward and duplicity is nice but um, I'm demonstrating cloudberry here because uh, I like using a GUI um, where it's available. I don't see any point really in using uh, command, you know, command line interfaces, terminal programs, just for the sake of it. Uh, particularly when I think Cloudberry is a nice, a nice tool as well. So basically, to get it, just type in Cloudberry download, and you can see. Now it's a bit confusing. Uh, don't ask me exactly what what's gone on here. The website is called msp360.com. Uh, I changed name from Cloudberry, but they still keep the old branding, the old name, and in inverted in brackets here. You just download this. Now, if I switch in, in here to Ubuntu Debian, what you would not understand is that there is, from the landing page, in my opinion, is that there is a fully functional free version. It just says free trial and request a demo. Um, for It is about $30 a year if you want to subscribe to the premium version. I personally didn't see anything 
in the premium version I lacked in the free version and I'm certainly paying for enough stuff as it is in the cloud that I didn't feel a compelling need to buy the license uh, but I believe encryption was one of those features so you can uh, go in for free trial and uh, let's just go back to this one uh, click for Ubuntu, uh, Debian Ubuntu and just you know fill out a, provide the provide them with a couple of details click on the download button and uh, that will get you the program installed now I'm just going to be using this for a file system backup um, you could actually also use this to back up uh, here's an idea to back up clonezilla so I talked about in a previous video uh, clone clonezilla creating those disk images bare metal backups and uh, I've never I did actually once moved one up to the cloud um, that's an option but it would be a bit cumbersome because you need to download that from the cloud you know onto a uh, external media and then run clonezilla connect that to the external media um, and then restore it that way so I basically for this computer for my Ubuntu Linux I've talked about this previously and gone through this in all these different videos I use uh, time shift for simple incremental uh, that's my first savior that's just kind of, you know, I have daily, weekly, monthly, and I just roll back the system quickly. Um, I've demonstrated Clonezilla before on this channel, and I've even demonstrated a Clonezilla restore. And that's number two, that if if that kind of software backup, that file backup doesn't work, Clonezilla will uh, save the day. So Clonezilla, and that actually brings me on to something about Cloudberry to point out, and that's that it actually supports both file system backups and uh, block level backups. So when you do Clonezilla, you're backing up the data in blocks. You're actually bypassing the file system. So instead of syncing up files, uh, you are syncing up uh, chunks, uh, compressed chunks of files, which you can then use to restore. So uh, it actually, Cloudberry has that option. Uh, data, data block level backup is, I believe, lighter. I, I'm saying I believe because I'm not sure. Lighter, but also quicker. Um, so without further ado, so basically in B2 over here, I have gone, let me just go into my B2. And you can see I have created a new bucket uh, and I've called it Cloudberry Demo DR. So I just need to remember that. And now I'm going to go into Cloudberry and show you how to set up that backup job. So this is Cloudberry and uh, you can see the build version down in the bottom left hand uh, corner of the window. Now what I really like about Cloudberry is that they it's a very logical way, at least to my mind, of setting up backup. So they the language they use is backup plan. So you can see Create backup plan is your first uh, first option, and of course, any true backup enthusiast, one of their first questions would be, well, how are we going to back up the backup plans? So you can see there is this export configuration uh, button here, which uh, which lets you actually back up the backup plans. So uh, create backup plan, and the first thing it shows me is all the different uh, cloud and remote storages. And actually, the NES is not really a remote storage. I showed in a previous video that you can actually use uh, Cloudberry to back up the, uh, your, uh, your, your system to the NAS. Uh, so that's on your local area network. And that was really simple to configure. These are other um, B2 backblaze, B2 buckets that I've already set up and I've created some backup plans. Uh, none of them I'm really using except for this one, the full disk to B2. So that's running, but I'm going to just kind of uh, do a dummy uh, dummy replication. So click on the little uh, plus icon in order to uh, attach another form of cloud storage. Now, as I said about Cloudberry, the strength here is really, I mean, look at this for the, um, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the list of heavy hitters, the, the dream team of object storages that they have available here. Um, just to highlight some classics, you have S3 and Glacier. So if you are backing up, you're backing up and your object, your cloud backup source is Amazon S3, then go for that one. They have a different one for China. I have no idea what that's about. As I said, I don't use S3 for cloud backups anymore. And by the way, if you want to migrate between S3 and B2, check out a tool called Flexify. It's crazy, crazy quick, moves it over the um, over the wire directly cloud to cloud and I moved over you know tens if not hundreds of gigabytes in a few minutes so if you want to just do that migration check out flexify.io um, so besides S3 you have Azure as well as I said file system here as you can see uh, can be used to either use a local container um, and you also have Oracle Cloud you also have I mean the ones consumers would care about really would be I guess Wasabi 
uh, Alibaba Cloud, uh, S3 compatible is an interesting one. Uh, you're seeing like B2 rolled out these S3 compatible endpoints now and Google Cloud. But I'm going to go for Back Backblaze B2. And uh, it was Cloud Berry Demo DR. Now, just before I do this, I want to just jump quickly, and I'm I'm sorry for losing the logical flow of this video a little bit here, just to say that this is not the only option for if you want to uh, back up your system to Cloudberry. Backblaze also have an integrations um, listing on their website, and uh, you can basically filter by use case. Uh, so I can go use case backup and archive. The little Linux penguin, the Tux penguin, is here, and uh, I've tried out a few of these tools. There's not really much to say except that you have. Duplicati, which is another front end for, I believe, for Duplicity. Duplicity ex itself, Flexify, as I've just mentioned, uh, Free NAS, GoodSync. Uh, there's a few of them, and they actually do mention uh, MSP360, aka uh, Cloudberry Lab. So you can check out this list. I checked out Restic as well. Uh, check out this list if you're not satisfied by this methodology, of course, analogy, um, but uh, this works pretty nicely. So back to the backup. Okay, so um, I put in the display name and now I'm just going to quickly go ahead and put in my key ID and application key for B2. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that and uh, immediately after I put in the key ID and application key, I got my whole list of buckets there and then I just went in and selected Cloudberry Demo DR and now I can click on OK. So after I've done that, it then appears in this list of cloud storage and I can give it a uh, custom name as well, which I will do later just to make it easier to pick up. And that was before I have the option to give the backup uh, backup name a plan. So I'm going to call this uh, demo full system B2 backup. Now, here is the block level backup selector that I discussed before. So I'm currently act actually using file uh, file based backup. But if you want to go for a block level backup, then that's where you have the option. Um, and also interesting that as a kind of form of backup, you can you have this option ticked by default to save the backup plan configuration to the backup storage. So you kind of automatically get at least that backup plan's own uh, mapping built into the backup itself. The next screen is selecting your backup source. So I have not figured out yet exactly what all these strange numbers are, um, but basically by op going into the file system, uh, which is of course has this root over here, um, I can go into the primary file system I want to back up. And one thing to quickly point out is other drives on your system show up here too, so I do know what this one is. Backups is my uh, SDB, it's a separate drive, uh, just, just that I use just for backups, which has Clonezilla and Timeshift, so this is where I um, actually store my local Timeshift backups and my Clonezilla backups. So um, that's what those others, I still don't know what all these numbers are, but uh, let's go into the uh, backup file system and see what's in there. So the next question is what do you not need and what, what do you need? So firstly tick your local file system and then go through what you don't need. Uh, so this is a little bit, you know, it depends from system to system, but there are certain things that really don't, that users do not need. So the first one of these, now you can firstly look up, there are a few different lists I've come across. I'm actually drawing this list from an Ask Ubuntu forum, what is safe to exclude for a full system backup. And I'm looking at the leading answer for what this guy uh, excludes with rsync. Um, so, so some of these are, for example, virtual folders that are generated during the system run state. So one of these, uh, let's actually go alphabetically instead. Uh, the first one I tick off is dev, uh, media, mount, uh, uh, let's see and also proc. Now you can do more reading into which folders because there are some differences of opinion and I think some people will say more, some people will say less. The second thing you want to do is look at your own system. Um, so my system is not your standard system. So I have this folder here called backup in which um, from the root in which, in which time at one point I've dumped in Clonezilla images. So I wouldn't want to be dumping uh, an entire backup of the system into a backup of the system because I then I would then be duplicating the backup. So again, this is my system and not standard. So I, w I would not want this. Then there are other things that I would uh, manually disable. So I'm just now running through my uh, my user on the system. And one thing that I don't back up, so there's a few things here. Firstly, pCloud. And again, uh, think of the rationale here. So I'm running this on Cloudberry uh, runs on a live system, right? So on my live system, pCloud, uh, I'm using just the default pCloud client that actually 
mounts and creates a file system here. So if I ran this backup and I included pcloud, I would end up including um, the my pcloud, which is a few gigabytes, in the backup. Now I'm already backing up my pcloud with its own methodology, so I would not want to capture pcloud in this backup because it would just be a waste of gigabytes of data for an unnecessary additional backup. The same thing for Google Drive. I use the uh, OCaml Fuse to mount Google Drive here, so I don't want to backup, take my Google Drive in this backup. Uh, Git, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, you know, I could use this as a way to back up my Git repositories, but I don't really want to. Um, actually, I'm going to take it because in the event of a system restore, not to back up the repositories per se, but just to have the system set up that might be useful and Git does, my Git repositories aren't that heavy. The other thing I would want would be to take off would be VMware. So this is where VMware Workstation Player stores all its virtual machine files and those are heavy. Uh, so that's really the only reason I wouldn't be backing those up um, because I think it's better to uh, you know, find backup component by component. So if I backed up those um, virtual machines in their own way, I would not want to capture them in this backup. So I think that's really enough um, in terms of what I want to back up. So I can go on to the next screen now. Um, now it automatically has this option for do not backup hidden files ticked. So that's just something to point out. I've always unticked this because some of the hidden files are starting with a dot in their file name are things like configuration files. Um, for example, the Redshift, um, you know, there's a few files, uh, hidden files that I have changed and made edits to. So therefore, in the interest of making this backup as thorough as possible, even though this will entail collecting a bunch of uh, hidden files I don't need, I always actually uh, untick this option before going on to the next screen. Uh, now, you don't get this in the free edition. So remember I said there was this, was, this is really what's missing. Two things are missing, uh, two major things at least, uh, compression and encryption. If you do pay for uh, $30, is not that expensive. So if it's 30 bucks for per computer and you really like the look of this tool, and you want to encrypt the backup and to uh, compress the backup, then you can go for this option. You have the option to go for a, to set a custom retention policy for the backup files, but I'm just going for default, um, not to enforce retention policy. And finally, you can uh, create a schedule. So this is actually, because this runs incrementally, by which I mean that um, when you back up your, your files, it's gonna run the first time if you have an internet connection like me and you're backing up the whole file system, um, you know it's going to take essentially days in order for this to run. So that's the bad news. The good news is that once you run this the first time, the more often you run this, the smaller the chunks are naturally going to be and the quicker that will take. So basically the first time, prepare to leave your computer turned on for potentially days or if you have a good uh, upload or symmetrical internet, then you know you might be lucky and it might only take a day. But um, after that, then it's, it makes sense to put this on some kind of schedule, a daily schedule, run it at midnight or something, and uh, that will move up the small chunks of the file system only that were changed since the last run. Finally, you have the backup plan notification option. Uh, it'll send you a uh, the you know the output of how the backup went. So I recommend tinkering with a few options here. Um, I would say something as important as backup, I don't like uh, skimping on the notifications. So I would go for um, in all cases. So it's by default, it'll only send you a notification when it fails. I would, I would personally, if it, this were me, I would like to know every single time it ran. It doesn't bother me to get one um, to keep, you know, and then I would attach a Gmail, a Gmail um, filter based on the pattern here and just put those in just to gather a log in my inbox of exactly what went on. Uh, you actually have a nice option here multiplying not of uh, notifying multiple email addresses. Um, and uh, I would also take this option here to generate a detailed report uh, because I think more logging is usually better than less and uh, you can check each day to see exactly make sure that your system backup to an offsite source ran appropriately. After that's done, it gives you um, it gives you this uh, this output over here, uh, just a summary of the backup plan, and you it's you know it's worth having a quick read through this. Backup storage is our Cloudberry bucket, uh, Cloudberry demo dr. It's going to create the backup with, so it's going to create this file, um, this folder in the backup source at the root, and then the backup will be inside this. Uh, the plan name I've I've given this its own custom name, demo full system b2 backup. Uh, what's included, it includes the root folder, so that's the whole file system. And then I've excluded backup, dev, I've excluded my Google Drive, pcloud, 
and VMware and Media mount and proc and I probably in a you know if this were a real backup I'd probably want to actually exclude more than that um, and I'm not using these well that wasn't really a choice because of, uh, this is the free plan schedules once daily and this is my notification option and if you want to start the backup now tick the run plan now option and then click on done so that's it I did click the uh, run uh, sorry the uh, run now option and as you can see the backup is initiating so this is what it looks like when the job is in progress you have your info up here the last runtime uh, save on cloud is yes the schedule and source and destination and there's not really much to do here but I mean this is why I prefer this tool to using something like uh, you know our clone or uh, or uh, you know uh, duplicity you can just basically keep this program running have it running on schedule and you can just go in and check uh, exactly what's going on you can see the current file it's working on how many files are copied and uh, it estimates the total file size this updates periodically so there's no way that this whole system backup only comes to four gigabytes but um, you know once I've checked my current cloudberry backup at the cloud and uh, certainly it contains uh, a, a copy of the file system an up-to-date copy so this does work so that's basically it if you have any questions um, about cloudberry or any aspects of Linux backups uh, I'd always be happy to hear them uh, my website can be accessed through danielrosal.com at 2 Ls in Rosal and I look forward to making the next video